Hey everyone, this is Casey with C. Reeves Makes, and welcome to week four of the Big Build Off, hosted by the Builders Challenge. In the last episode, I went step by step through the process of taking the base from a rough cut layout all the way to a final glue up. This week, we are wrapping up the little details leading up to the finishing process. I start by clamping the base into my workbench so that I can put an eighth inch round over on all the exposed edges. This will ease the sharpness of all the contours on the base and also resist any major damage from chairs, shoes, or vacuum cleaners in the future. The bottom of the stretchers was curved, so the router would not follow all the way down into this valley where the half lap joint was. So I had to use my chisels to slowly remove the material to match up with the round over profile. This was a lot of fun and very satisfying to peel each little string of walnut off until I got the shape that I desired. If you have never used chisels before, I recommend trying this out and you will quickly get used to the action of the tool and how to feel the cut as you go. Up next, I needed to put a profile on the top. I continued with an 8th inch round over on the top edge and used a 45 degree chamfer bit for the bottom to ease the appearance of the inch and a half thick tabletop. The next area that I needed to tackle was mounting the base to the bottom of the tabletop. I did not take into account that I was leaving the center of the bottom of the table empty and therefore I would need to build up 3 quarters of an inch to get the table to sit at the 30 inch dining table height. So I decided to make this upper mounting section out of some spare walnut that I had left over. I took the two pieces of walnut and ripped and cross cut them to size and then used my dado stack to produce a half lap joint. I then glued them together and let them sit overnight. The next day I took them out of clamps and cleaned up any glue squeeze out with my sander. I also added a chamfer to them to mimic the profile on the bottom of the tabletop. I wanted to add leveling feet to this table that could be adjusted to compensate for any uneven floors. I picked these felt leveling feet at my local Rockler store and I also got some easy lock threaded inserts. I simply marked the center of the bottom of each leg and then used a large Forstner bit to drill a pocket to allow for the foot to kind of hide in. I then drilled the required sized hole based on the depth of the threading on the leveling foot. After that, I simply threaded the insert into the holes using glue as a good bonding agent. Now it was time to locate and mount the upper bracket to the base. I 
I start by centering and aligning the base to the bracket, and I then lay out where I want the screws to be, making sure that I will not be breaking through into any domino locations. Here's a good lesson on how to bump your camera with your arm and then not double check the shot while drilling the counterbores for the screws. But you still get the idea. For screws, I use Power Pro Hardware large interior wood screws to secure the two pieces together. I measure and mark the center of the base and drill a hole, and then I measure and mark the center of the bracket and I drill the same hole and I locate the two with a single screw in the middle. I then realign everything, make sure that it squares up, clamp it, and then secure it with screws around the perimeter. Five screws total hold the bracket to the base. I decided to use figure eight washers to mount the tabletop to the base. Using a Forstner bit, I pre-drilled each location deep enough to allow for the washer to sit flush into the pocket. This would allow the tabletop to sit flush on top of the base. And then it was on to the final sanding of the base. I started with 100 grit and worked my way through 120, 150, and 180. One other thing that bugged me was that we had a ton of heat and humidity after I had finished the tabletop and it developed a slight buckle towards the middle. I have always liked how they use steel C-channel and larger slab projects to stabilize them and keep them as flat as possible, so I incorporated the same idea into my tabletop. I started out by laying out the C-channels to best fit the area that I wanted to put them in. I then cut them to my desired length using my multi-material saw. To create slots in the channels, off camera I pre-drilled two holes next to each other, and then I used my hand drill with a 5 16th bit to connect those two holes and making a slot. Next it was on to laying the C-channels on the table and marking both sides of its location. After that, I took them outside for painting. I chose a dark walnut flat paint to finish these channels off. While the paint was drying, I then set up my large plunge router with a 5 16 straight bit. I needed to cut two mortises into the bottom of the table on each side for the C-channel to sit into. I measured everything out and using my long level as a straight edge, I took a couple of passes with the router and then I checked my depth. To secure the channels in place, I'm going to be using bolts and threaded inserts. I mark the centers and then set a stop collar on a drill bit so that I don't drill through the other side of the table. I pre-drill all the holes for the channels. Then using an allen wrench and wood glue, I set each of the inserts into the walnut. And then all that was left was to tighten down all the bolts. I tightened the center bolt that was in a single hole, but all the bolts that went into the slots on the outside, I left a little bit loose. This would allow for wood movement over the seasons. All that was left was final sanding. I had pretty much sanded everything at 80 grit, but I wanted to work through the grits from 100 up through 180. It was a beautiful day outside, so I decided to move the process outdoors to keep some of the dust out of the shop. Using a pencil, I scribble a bunch of lines on top of the table with each grit to make sure that I've covered the entire area and sanded everything thoroughly. With all the sanding complete, the only thing left is to put finish on this table. But that's going to be next week's video, so tune in for that one. 
I'd like to thank Moss Epoxy for sponsoring this week's video. You'll see me use Moss for the first time next week. I'd like to thank the Builders Challenge for hosting the big build off. This has been a great opportunity and I'm loving how this table is turning out. Tune in next week for week 5 of the big build off. I'm Casey with C Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.